Hi, this is Old Dog New Tricks, and in this video I will be calling people and organizations what they are, without euphemisms, just the stripped-down truth and reality. Blind belief in authority is the greatest enemy of truth. Belief is the enemy of knowledge. A belief can sometimes be true in that it is backed up by research which has fleshed it out as the truth which then transmutes it into knowledge. So calling any information a belief that is supported by evidence is like calling your reflection in a mirror the real you. Knowledge cannot be a belief because knowledge is supported by empirical evidence and intelligent deduction. Think of a bucket full of stars as a brain full of knowledge and think of an empty bucket as a brain without knowledge but full of invisible ideas and dreamed up wishes. For example, if you believe in the legitimacy of government you have clearly not done any research, because if you had, you would be confident in your knowledge that the government is completely illegitimate, which banishes the previous unfounded belief and converts it into knowledge. Knowledge is power. To reiterate, knowledge is an idea or a thought the veracity of which has been investigated and backed by evidence. Beliefs can be thought of as fractional reserve knowledge, Ideas produced out of thin air much in the same way our so-called money is backed by nothing. So what happens when a person holds and disseminates knowledge on certain topics while choosing to ignore others in order to simultaneously cling to a system of unfounded beliefs? What do we make of these bastions of truth that pick and choose what beliefs they will convert to knowledge and fact-based reality? Let's first take a look at some of the things they believe in, but which they broadcast as knowledge, which contradicts the process of analysis that must be met in order to validate a belief and upgrade it into knowledge. For example, beliefs say, Trump and Q are the second revolution. Knowledge says they aren't. Beliefs tells you Trump is the storm. He isn't, knowledge repeated. Beliefs will tell you that Trump is the storm that has arrived. It hasn't, knowledge said. Beliefs say grand juries and indictments are coming. Knowledge says they aren't. Beliefs said Trump planning mass arrests tri military tribunals in June 2019. But knowledge says that we are beyond 2019 of June, and it did not happen. And it won't. Quit daydreaming. When friend of the Clintons pedophile Jeffrey Epstein was arrested, belief said, It's happening. It isn't, said knowledge. When beliefs were shaped by mainstream media telling you Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide, knowledge said, Who cares? Beliefs say Trump wants to put Hillary Clinton in jail. Knowledge says he doesn't. Do you realize Trump's campaign slogan was, America isn't great? What's that? You don't think that's true? I beg to differ, because saying America, saying make America great again is the same as saying America isn't great. And beliefs assures us that the slogan was original nonetheless because beliefs say Trump is refreshing and original. But he isn't. Not even close. And you think your vote counts? Because this is just a coincidence, right? Despite this, beliefs say Trump is making America great again. Knowledge overstands that it isn't America he's making great. Beliefs say Trump stands tall and America is first. Knowledge says he doesn't, and it isn't. Beliefs proclaim that Donald Trump fights for American workers and the unemployment rate is at an all-time low of 3.9%. Knowledge says that's inaccurate because 93 million Americans aren't even counted. Belief says that Donald Trump really wants Americans to keep their guns. But knowledge looks closely at all so-called mass shooting events 
and you don't even need knowledge to come to the truth in many cases. Why? Because Trump has provided the truth for you. Beliefs say Trump is a gift from God himself, but knowledge reveals reality. Beliefs say Trump claims all religious choices are legitimate. Knowledge says he doesn't, but he'll tell you what you want to hear. Beliefs decry Trump stands for peace. But beliefs won't tell you anything about the USS Vincennes shooting down Iran Air Flight 655 on July 3, 1988 and murdering all of the plane's 290 civilian passengers, including 66 children, while the civilian airliner was traveling within its commercial air route, its transponder squawking over a commercial channel that it was a civilian airliner. Why won't beliefs tell you this? Because it was virtually ignored by mainstream media. But if you did catch the scant news stories at the time, beliefs will have you fantasizing that the crew of the USS Vincennes mistook the airliner for an attacking F-14 fighter jet while involved in a confrontation with Iranian gunboats. But knowledge knows that's a big fat lie. It's what mainstream media does. Under Trump, by way of contrast, knowledge will shine the bright light of hypocrisy on the U.S. corporation when it reveals the alleged Iranian shootdown of an unmanned U.S. drone that was in its own international territory June 20, 2019, resulting exactly zero murder victims. So let's compare, shall we? The U.S. murders 290 Iranian civilians and Iran only says the U.S. can't be trusted. But Iran allegedly shoots down an unmanned U.S. drone with zero casualties and the U.S. cries, act of war. So beliefs will have you entertain the notion that Iran, defending its territory pursuant to Article 51 of the United Nations Charter, is an act of war. And knowledge will inform us that this divergence of common sense exposes the U.S. terrorist government's nefarious agenda for eventually destabilizing Iran by bombing it into oblivion and murdering millions of its people, installing a Rothschild central bank and a puppet dictator, and occupying it with unthinking, order-following U.S. bankers' soldiers until the one world government is achieved. Knowledge reveals that the war drums are beating for Iran and have been for some time now. Despite what beliefs conceals, knowledge also reveals this fact, that Iran invaded one country 221 years ago in 1798, and the U.S. has invaded 50 countries since 1945, 70 since 1776. And when the Iranian genocide starts, beliefs will shout to the world that Iran deserved it. Because beliefs say Iran is poking at the U.S. with a war stick, and knowledge says, don't be an idiot. Speaking of airplanes, what do beliefs say about 9-11? Beliefs will have you hold in your mind that a 757 jumbo jet crashed into the Pentagon at over 500 miles per hour, and despite the fact that knowledge of the science which assures you that this is not possible without the plane breaking apart, still... Beliefs allow you to see things that are not there, but knowledge is much smarter than that. Schill's beliefs explain away the fact that there is no evidence of a plane hitting the Pentagon. They say, airplanes are mostly air. The wings folded back. It slipped inside the Pentagon. Planes are aluminum. Knowledge asks, if the plane could go through all of these three buildings, then why didn't planes go through the Twin Towers? Question. If a 757 jumbo jet punched through three buildings and exited here, where is the airy aluminum airplane part that punched this hole out of the third building? This is what knowledge looks like concerning the crash of a jumbo jet. Empirical evidence. Huge burnt and distorted sections of the plane at the crash site. This is wreckage from TAM Flight 3054 crashed in Sao Paulo, Brazil, July 2007. Beliefs will tell you that scraps like this, allegedly photographed at the Pentagon, prove a 757 crashed into it. But knowledge says, this is a little on the nose, isn't it? The bodies of passengers and crew were recovered from TAM Flight 3054. 
there were no recovered bodies of passengers or crew at the Pentagon, because knowledge reveals that a passenger jet did not crash at the Pentagon. Beliefs has a million explanations for why dozens of cameras didn't capture a massive jumbo jet approaching and smashing into the Pentagon, the most heavily protected and surveilled building on the planet. But knowledge calls every drummed up lie, I, I mean belief, horse feathers. Speaking of airplanes, part two. This is a DC-3. See the people standing in front of it? This is what the wreckage of a DC-3 looks like. Crashed in Finland, November 1963. This is what knowledge sees. You see the debris on the ground from a small plane. So what does it look like according to beliefs when a 757 jumbo jet crashes into the ground? It looks like this according to beliefs. Shanksville, Pennsylvania. On 9-11, United Airlines Flight 93, a 757 jumbo jet crashed right here. Popular Mechanics propaganda piece told us the plane liquefied upon impact. That is a direct quote. No plane, no bodies, no luggage, no evidence. Just a hole in the ground. Let's be real. If there are no elephant footprints in your jello, then there's no elephant in your refrigerator. In an allegedly open forum, Q was asked if a plane hit the Pentagon. Q said yes. And Q is correct if what he meant was that a plane hit the Pentagon with a missile. This is what those with beliefs will tell you to disguise the fact that they do not have knowledge. See the missile up top corner? It might be that one. It might be a different one. But you can see it in the yellow circle. The nose cone is entering the frame. Do you want to see it for yourself? Sure, I'd be happy to oblige you. There were approximately, I read many times, 86 cameras that would have captured this scene. And the edited footage that you're about to see was released six years later. So, shall we watch the missile that hit the Pentagon? Look right over here. There it is. And then it's cut, and you see a fireball. No back tail of the plane sticking out. No wings flying to the ground. Nothing. Here it comes again, right here. Missile low to the ground. And boom, there you have it. Knowledge of facts reveals that you are being lied to by Q and by Trump who does nothing to hold accountable those in the US and the Israeli governments responsible for 9-11 for murdering 2,996 Americans and 1.5 million Iraqis, half a million of whom were children. And these scumbags are complicit. They pump up the lies and protect the mass murderers. They are just as guilty. Do you get your beliefs from these sources? Do you watch these channels? Congratulations. You have no idea what is really going on. Beliefs will tell you Trump doesn't expose 9-11 because he's making moves on a four-dimensional chessboard. But knowledge knows exactly why he doesn't expose 9-11. Because he doesn't want one of these in his head. Now you know that beliefs hold no weight because they have no real value other than the energy of confidence which which they are invested. Here's something else the value of which is dependent upon and only upon confidence. The 9-11 segment of our video marks the 18th year the lie has been propagated, the murders unavenged, the murderers still free, rich, and continuing to terrorize your planet and its people. Every fact I touched on, and much more, is all common knowledge among the aforementioned bastions of truth who flail their pom-poms at the mere mention of Trump, or for whatever traitorous actor is filling the role of the so-called president. They do not have beliefs about 9-11 truth, they have knowledge. In it, they cling desperately to the belief that if Trump just jails minor actors like Hillary and Comey, that they'll be eliminating the possibility of another false flag event like 9-11, or any incident necessary for starting wars. This is dangerous. It is turning a blind eye to the true problem that grinds on in the deepest depths of our reality. I have even, I have even heard one such YouTube truth channel simply brush off the sycophantic support the U.S. and all sellout politicians have for Israel's government, and that is pure ignorance. 
They fall over themselves to raise Trump up as our savior who will right all the wrongs and turn everything right side up again. Why do they do this? They do it because they are cowards. They are cowards always looking for someone else to fix things, someone else to do the dirty work, someone else to stick their neck out so they can be a content little slave in their comfortable space while the government abuses their estate and lies to their faces and poisons their children's minds and bodies. These people still vote. They are voters. They once exposed voter fraud and rigged elections and the machines that do it, and now they legitimize voting with pronouncement of the power of the people who have spoken at the voting booth, telling you, lying to you, that because someone is in office whom they have chosen to believe is the revolution we need, suddenly voting really works, and machines aren't rigged and all evidence to the contrary just flew out the window. Suddenly their vote counts even though knowledge exposes the truth that no way and no how would the psychopaths that manipulate all governments allow the people they despise to be the ones to choose their puppet for them. It is preposterous. And you realize, of course, that you had nothing whatsoever to do with the choosing of candidates. But the bastions of truth have simply decided to ignore every single guilty party they themselves have revealed and exposed. They have decided to ignore the deep-rooted organizations, institutions, and groups that connect all governments acting in concert for centuries for more power and control over every square inch of land and every nurturing, peaceful man and woman. All these obvious indicators of a prison planet are reduced to something called a deep state, which they believe can simply be corrected by voting in the right person who promises to jail a few character actors. This is worse than beliefs that do not have knowledge. This is knowledge being traded in for the safety of beliefs. They lie to themselves. They wear a mask. And they probably suffer from cognitive dissonance. Which refers to a situation involving conflicting attitudes, beliefs, or behaviors. This produces a feeling of mental discomfort leading to an alteration in one of the attitudes, beliefs, or behaviors to reduce the discomfort and restore balance. So for those who suffer from cognitive dissonance and are too weak to handle the fact that Donald Trump is incapable of fixing anything, saving anybody, or changing anything for the better, turn this video off, go watch TV, and eat some cheese balls. We are now going to look at what knowledge tells us will never be spoken about, remedied, or acknowledged in any way by the President of the United States of America who in reality is just the CEO of a corporation called the United States of America, which is 10 square miles in Washington, D.C. Furthermore, a little research will expose the fact that the term president means the president of the United States acting through the assistant to the president for Homeland Security in coordination with the Secretary of State, the Commissioner of Immigration and Naturalization, the Attorney General, the Director of S Central Intelligence, the Director of the FBI, the Secretary of Transportation, the Commissioner of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, and the Secretary of the Treasury, all stacked up on the totem pole above Trump. The pro-Trumpers have decided to completely overlook the fact that elections are rigged and imply that the global, well-rooted, manipulative institutions that have their collective hands shoved up Trump's ass to make his mouth move will simply disappear if only a few bit players were to be thrown in jail. They have conveniently decided to ignore this proven reality as a means to exempt themselves in cowardice from having to take any personal actions toward real change. So we ask these flip-flopping Trump cheerleaders, is Trump going to oust Common Core from our indoctrinating Prussian school system designed to produce blind, unthinking followers of authority? Common Core, which Trump himself called a disaster and a very bad thing. Common Core, a communist system that is brainwashing your children to believe in lies, like the official, like the official fairy tale of 9-11, so that they'll grow into subservient adults that praise government. Sure he will, just as soon as he allows concealed carry permits to be recognized in all 50 states, as promised. Is Trump going to remove Public Law 102-14, which legitimizes the Talmudic Noahide Law? You're going to have to freeze these screen here if you want to read these slides. Noahide Law, which calls for the death of anyone praying to Jesus. 
Noahide laws that elevate Jews in a class above non-Jews. From the Talmud, which teaches, among many reprehensible acts, that killing Goy, or non-Jews, isn't really murder. Silly. It's a sacrifice to God. No. Knowledge says, no, Trump is not going to remove Talmudic laws from American Public Law 10214. Is Trump going to end the private Federal Reserve Bank and print our own money as his government's constitutional right to stop the accumulation of more debt to ease the burden on the people he's supposed to be serving? According to Georgetown professor Dr. Carol Quigley, the goals of the investment bankers who control central banks want, this is a quote, nothing less than to create a world system of financial control in private hands able to dominate the political system of each country and the economy of the world as a whole controlled in a feudalist fashion by the central banks of the world acting in concert by secret agreements arrived at in frequent private meetings and conferences. When is Trump going to take steps to reverse this and uphold humanity over financial gain by corrupt, immoral cabals of bankers? Trump allegedly stopped ISIS. You remember them. Or have you already forgotten about ISIS? The big bad terrorist group that had magically infiltrated the entire world with their nylon flags and made-in-USA tents and parade of Toyotas, but without a single fighter jet. Yes, it must be magic. When will your God-sent Trump end actual terrorism? Speaking of terrorists, the Bilderberg Group is a private club where presidents, prime ministers, international bankers, generals, and other reprobates secretly plot toward a militarily enforced one-world government at grave detriment to freedom, human rights, and all men, women, and children on this planet. Is your precious Trump going to dismantle this group whose aim is for zero-growth societies of servants and to rule over them? Is Trump going to put a stop to our endless wars? I hope you've all seen that General H.R. McMaster said that war in Afghanistan at that time can be sustained, but the narrative of a war-weary American public is hurting that effort. Oh, we're so inconvenient to their wars. Is Trump your saver going to end the Council on Foreign Relations, which is the promotional arm of the criminal banking class whose goal is to overthrow the Constitution and American sovereignty? The Royal Institute of International Flares Affairs, which spawned the CFR, is diseased with corporate members who should clue you in to the kinds of nefarious shenanigans they're up to. Chevron, AIG, Bloomberg, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Lockheed Martin, ExxonMobil, and dozens of other corporations, institutions, and foreign governments. When is your good buddy Trump going to stop this think tank that deliberately extended World War I? Or would locking up this bitch be enough for you? What about NAFTA, violator of the UN International Bill of Human Rights, oppressor of opposition groups, and the cause of the shutdown of over 58,000 U.S. manufacturing facilities and the loss of over 5 million American jobs? But beliefs remind us that Trump revised NAFTA for the benefit of Big Pharma and Big Oil. NAFTA was signed in December 1992 by terrorist George H.W. Bush, and one year later the already Congress-approved NAFTA was signed by rapist Bill Clinton. Enough said about Trump-approved NAFTA. Is your divine Trump going to dismantle the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, an intergovernmental military alliance of 29 countries ensuring perpetual war and nuclear blackmail since Trump was a child? Is the hero Trump going to abolish the Club of Rome, which has been championing global depopulation and eugenics since he was 22 years old? The Club of Rome is the father of the Hegelian dialectic of creating a problem so that you beg it to provide a solution, which is always a predetermined outcome that is never beneficial to you. For example, poorly staged, media-complicit, crisis-actor-populated actor problem. Brainwashed, media-driven, crisis actor-infested reaction. Predetermined solution. That's how it works. Just ask these people.
Is Trump going to stop the World Health Organization, which ensures that cancer-causing industrial waste is kept in the U.S. drinking water supply? Since 1948. You know it as fluoride, a poison that blinds your third eye, also known as the pineal gland, and making you sick in the process. When is Gladiator Trump going to put a stop to the Convention on Biological Diversity and the Wildlands Project, according to whom private land ownership is a principal instrument of accumulation and concentration of wealth and therefore contributes to social injustice? The Wildlands Project that believes individual rights will have to take a back seat to the collective. When is Trump going to overturn this violation of human rights by executive order? When is your brave leader Trump going to allocate enough money to help American men, women, and children who have no home to speak of? When is he going to stop funding Israel's genocide against Palestine to the tune of $38 billion? In other words, when is your sweetheart Trump going to start spending our money on us and our needs instead of on funding Israel's continued mass murder of peaceful Palestinians? When will Trump find the time to put a stop to the global manipulation of human consciousness perpetuated by the Tavistock Institute since 1946, when Trump was just a baby? When is Trump going to expose the goings-on of the Bohemian Group at the Bohemian Grove, where in present days the powers enslaving us gather for mock sacrifices of children under a giant owl statue to eradicate their care for other living beings in a ceremony called the Cremation of Care. When will he dissolve the Trilateral Commission which has seized control of the U.S. government and consolidated political, monetary, intellectual, and ecclesiastical power to rule the future and create a new world order, as exposed by Barry Goldwater? When Trump was a teenager, in 1964. Among so many goals that violate human rights, the United Nations is actively engaged in disarming Americans, abolishing private property, ending national sovereignty, creating human settlement zones, restricting mobility and opportunity, and categorizing farmlands as unsustainable. When is your Mr. Wonderful going to disband them? Let me guess just as soon as he adds another terrorist to his list of psychopaths he's played golf with. And by the way, when are our American presidents ever going to shut the hell up about Israel? Never. And never mind the other governments around the world chemtrailing the hell out of their countries. But when is the great almighty Trump, who cares so very much about Americans, going to stop the spraying of barium, strontium-90, aluminum, cadmium, zinc, and other viruses over our heads? Or can't he look up? Do your research, watch your sky, see it for yourself. When is your precious politician du jour going to release the technologies hidden in black projects that would help humanity, including electrogravitics, which offers gravity control and free energy from the electromagnetic field that pervades the universe? because another oil spill is always around the corner. When is Trump going to pull the 1.6 billion NASA wants for 2020 to go back to the moon? Back? One of the biggest lies ever told and propagated by mainstream media to this day is that six manned vessels called the Apollo missions landed on the moon between 1969 and 1971. And never once since, by the way. But knowledge reveals that this is a transparent lie the fraudsters known as NASA have they themselves revealed. Like so-called astronaut Terry Virts here, pretending to be on something called an international space station? Will Trump ever tell the truth about the fake moon landings and a hodgepodge of other NASA lies? No. Knowledge says no. When is your knight in shining armor going to pull out of APAC, the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, which authored the loyalty pledge Congress signs that puts Israel first over America? This is called treason, by the way. APAC is a foreign agent. APAC, whose 1992 President David Steiner was caught on tape bragging that he cut a deal with the U.S. government under war criminal George H.W. Bush 
to give Israel $10 billion in loans, $3 billion in military aid, and, I quote, about a billion dollars in other goodies that people don't even know about. Hmm, I wonder what those goodies might be. Will Trump hold the Centers for Disease Control accountable for omitting data that mercury in vaccines causes autism so as not to disrupt the profits being made by the likes of Glasgow, Smith Klein, Merck, Wyeth, and Avantis Pasteur, among others? Who is ever held accountable for anything? If the next looming, mathematically guaranteed worst financial crash ever happens under Trump's watch, will he bail out the people instead of the banks? And will he let the banks fail and prosecute them to put a stop to the wiping out of the middle class via an unprecedented transference of wealth like Iceland did in 2008? I wouldn't hold your breath. Because everything is in place for the bail-in, which is the siphoning of money right out of your bank account to save the banks. This has already occurred in other countries. When is Trump, the servant of the people, going to outright abolish genetically manipulated seeds and cancer-causing organisms from the food we eat? 5G technology records and transmits personal data for the purposes of surveillance of private men and women. It emits high-energy, density-pulsed microwave frequencies and waste electricity harmful to biological organisms. Like these organisms. 5G also makes you vulnerable to hacking and creates erroneously high utility bills, and in 2015, thousands of so-called smart meters simultaneously exploded in Stockton, California. When is the so-called people's president going to take time out of his busy ask Israel ass-kissing schedule to abolish the proven dangers of 5G? For those of you who have a smart meter or are wanting to fight the installation of smart meters, go to inpowermovement.com. They have a notice of liability regarding trespassing technology and affidavit templates to fill in, complete with easy-to-follow instructions. They have videos on their website and on YouTube. Pico Energy Company in Pennsylvania announced in 2012 that it will remove 96,000 so-called smart meters. Many others have been able to oust this harmful and invasive technology from their communities. It is not a rumor. So when are you alleged awakened ones going to get off your knees and stop praying to your little Zionist puppet to make much needed change for the protection and betterment of humanity itself? When are you going to stop asking for your rights back and instead start exercising the ones you haven't lost and can never lose? Believing that the problems we face can be fixed by the very causes of those problems restores the sufferers of cognitive dissonance with a regenerated misconception that their worldview is intact and that evidence contrary to their beliefs are just the crazy conspiracy theories of nutjobs. So people holding beliefs think that the problem is just rotten fruit in need of picking, and that men and women in government are working hard every day behind the scenes to do just that, and to return this great nation to we the people. They have been believing this lie decade after decade after decade. Beliefs will tell you that all you have to do is pick the rotten fruit from the tree and our problems will be solved. Beliefs will tell you that it's not even you that has to do the picking. Beliefs will have you quite complacent with your paradigm of constant struggle to just vote the right person into office to do the rotten fruit picking for you, because according to beliefs, you only have to do as little as possible. Beliefs dictates that the system will keep itself in check and that our allegedly necessary leaders are really looking out for our interests. Beliefs invest you with the confidence that the government is working for us, and being that power corrupts, there will occasionally be some rotten fruit that needs to get picked. Belief says this is how it has always been and everything works out for the best. What these holders of beliefs don't understand is that the fruit that rots dangles there for all to see and that it's signed up to be the fruit that will rot. The fruit rotting and dangling for all to see knew it would one day get picked. The fruit that would rot knows that in their circus garden, the clowns would one day pick them from the tree. As rotten fruit, they knew the clowns would juggle them for all to see in another circus called TV. 
and sometimes the clowns will stick them back into the tree, and other times rotten fruit falls to the ground, but that's too close to the root problem, and the mockingbird clowns will blubber about communistic democracy or rail against guns to capture your beliefs and to prevent knowledge from happening to you. This picking and juggling of rotten fruit is a well-designed carnival harvest to draw your attention away from the roots that grow beneath. The roots that grow beneath are the real problem, which few have untangled and even fewer truly understand. These roots grow exponentially with little disruption because the rotten fruit is being juggled and picked and sticked and rolling on the ground kicked by clowns and beliefs unknowingly and unwittingly guards the surface of the earth which covers them and the roots grow and grow and grow. The roots continue to grow. The roots that feed the fruit that rots grows down and out and far and wide and all around the world and even into space. And the roots are fed by the very people whose beliefs prevent them from seeing the roots as they slowly curl around their ankles, twist and wind up their bodies to cover their mouths to stop sound and to pierce their eyes so they cannot see. And the believers of an army of gardeners that will purge the orchard of rotten fruit do not even know that these roots have first untwisted under schools many decades earlier to check the, choke the foundations of knowledge as they burrow up through the tiled floors and into the feet of another believer called a teacher, to caress the teacher's mind and to manipulate a system of beliefs upon which the root's very existence is dependent. And the roots come out of the teacher's mouth. The roots first entered the minds of young believers to push the right lobes and prod the right impulses to assure that they would readily adapt to the restricting and the muting and the blinding to come. The restricting and the muting and the blinding that was already happening to them. The roots prepared them to adapt to an eagerness to believe in things without knowledge. These roots have throttled history itself and turned it into something it is not. They have mutated reality and warped thoughts and shaped cultures. The roots get into everything, even truth itself, especially truth. They snake through ephemeral institutions and corporate fictions and secret societies, and the roots are invisible because, invisible because so too are the organizations out of which they have grown. There are no roots, but they are everywhere. They cannot grab and do anything, but they constrict everything. They cannot touch, but we feel them far and wide. They make no noise, but we are shouted down by them. They cannot do anything, but they have enslaved the planet. The roots do not care of the gardeners in the orchards picking the rotten fruit, because clowns will juggle them away. And the believers will believe in their beliefs, so they don't have to worry about knowledge or about truth. Because for believers, nothing is more comforting than ignorance and a self-righteous attitude defended by more of the same for all the world to see. And the world is watching them. And the roots have made it so that believers will condemn knowledge as a lie or an assault against some sanctity or other, and that believers will rail against truth when it clashes with their beliefs, because that is the way of cowards and weak minds. Believers find solace in a majority of like-minded followers parroting in social echo chambers their beliefs which protect them from scary truths they cannot handle. And the roots grow out of their fingertips as they reach out to others who cannot see and cannot hear and who merely want to follow. People clinging to beliefs while consciously and deliberately resisting truth are milksops who deprive themselves of reality. They choose to live in a world based on lies, thereby supporting terrorism, propagating the enslavement of their own families, and aiding and abetting ongoing wars, artificial scarcity, and the many transgressions against freedom and human rights enumerated in this video. These people who merely have beliefs think of themselves as awakened, but they are only dreaming of being awake. Now you have to truly wake up and stop dreaming about it. My prediction, Trump will remain CEO for another term because they have you all right where they want you, believing in a system, and especially believing that your vote counts, and that there's always a chance you could choose someone that can change everything for the better, which is an absolute impossibility. This buys them another four years of self-deluded masses moaning and groaning over tedium while they continue to roll out their global enslavement, genocide, extortion, and lies as they have been doing for many decades. 
Whether or not Trump is kept on for another term as CEO, which the believers without solutions call an election win, this is what they'll say when he is no longer in office. Trump could have made America great again if he'd had more time. We just need to get another Trump in office. And what do the mere believers have in common with those that have knowledge and overstand reality? Neither one will say, I was wrong about Trump, because the blind believers won't admit it, and those with knowledge were right all along. So what is the difference between the blind believers and those who overstand the root system of our problem and have knowledge to back it up? The difference is that believers beg on their knees for the devil to turn himself into a god. They have empty hopes and whimsical dreams that a correct system of death and destruction that throttles the entire globe will somehow magically correct itself. And those who have knowledge overstand who they must look to for a solution. They look within for the solution because they have a deep understanding of how vast our problem is and how much deeper than the so-called deep state goes and that picking rotten fruit from the evil tree fixes nothing. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. This is the only remedy we have at our disposal, and you have all the power you need to make it happen. So what do these truly awakened people filled up with knowledge do to correct our problem? They claim their estates from mismanaging probate trustees, they correct the assumption that they are debtors and make it perfectly clear that they are the creditors and always have been, and file a UCC1 financing statement to inform the debtor that he or she has a financial interest in the debtor's personal property. The debtor is a straw man. They're all caps name which represents the trust the government created when they were born. They separate themselves as real people from the straw man slash corporate fiction. They operate in commerce as a transmitting utility, but without liability. They sever the adhesion contracts that make them a servant of the United States government of organized terrorism. They exempt themselves from IRS extortion by establishing the fact that they are not taxpayers. They plant their feet on the land as private men and women who practice self-determination and self-ownership. They reverse the government's assumption that they are belligerents and enemies of the state. They establish themselves as peaceful non-combatants that will not be taken advantage of. They seize funding, continuous wars, and destruction by establishing a supreme lien hold on their birth certificates. They copyright their name. They vitiate hundreds of thousands of so-called laws that no longer apply to them and establish a fee schedule for policy and forces that attempt to force on them a corporation's rules and regulations. They do all this and much more, but how? They do it by becoming a secured party creditor. All this time you've been waiting for yourself. This is a solution absent from so many so-called awakened people hoping the devils will come to their senses. This is a solution which procures remedies those devils themselves had to put in place to protect them from being accused of fraud. Remedies that have always been accessible to everyone and a fundamental solution that too few talk about. This is how you turn your back on the system and build a new and better one making them obsolete. Yes, I'm a principal in a common law company called Secured Services Co. that gets clients to a secured party status with which they can discharge debt and have leverage in their battles with corporate intrusion into their lives, but that is not why I make these videos. And it is not why they end with an announcement for our business. It's because this is the solution. We love freeing slaves, and we want you all to be free, whether you do it with us or you go to UCL. Understand ContractLineUWin.com. Their service is also comprehensive, though it is more expensive, and they don't include the free live life claim with CPAS. And to be honest, your accessibility to them for questions will be challenging. Or you could go to SPC University. This is Yusuf Al's business. He has a YouTube channel, and I highly recommend it. His service is a do-it-yourself package price low. He provides the documents, which would be about 80 pages. You fill them in and follow the instructions, and when you get stuck and have questions, which you definitely will, it can be very challenging getting on a webinar in order to ask questions so you can move forward. We used to do it this way, and it was extremely time-consuming and complicated, which is now why we have the turnkey system in place. We've gotten many clients who have tried this package kind of approach, 
and ended up shelving it from lack of guidance. Some of these people then come to us, often having to do everything all over again at more expense. Or come to us, Secured Services Co., and our streamlined process, which we execute on your behalf with limited power of attorney, start to finish, all expenses included, giving you time for your life, your family, and for your continued studies on these topics, and hopefully waking others up. You'll also get rewarded at 100 bucks a pop when someone you referred to us signs up. Look within for the solution, because you are the solution. We are the solution. The solution is already happening. They cannot stop it. Permission to mirror this video is granted. I would love it if you would start sending this video to these so-called truth channels that are waving their flags and jumping for joy over Trump. This video is compliments of the U.S. government. Thanks for waking me up.